Hello, welcome back. I'm back and it is another arcade video, arcade update video. Um, yeah, over the last couple of weeks I've been um, doing more stuff with my arcade machine, tweaking it here and there, adding bits, removing bits, thinking about what to change with it, having a lot of fun learning new things about arcade buttons and marquees and games as well. Really interesting stuff. Um, like, I'm learning stuff about these classic games that I never knew before. Let me give you an example. Uh, I'm recently actually... I've never had Asteroids or Asteroids Deluxe on my cabinet. I thought it was um, I thought it was a trackball game. A dial game. It's not actually. So, um, yeah, I, I, I never had it on there because I couldn't have a trackball. A spinner, you know. But, um, no, the original Asteroids arcade machine uses buttons. So I've set up a nice configuration with the, the buttons on my control pad, uh, con on, on the yeah, control panel. Uh, so I've added a few vector games like Asteroids and Astro Blaster uh, that use buttons only, not a joystick or a spinner or anything like that. So I've been really enjoying those and uh, the, the, the whole kind of point of it is to kind of enjoy them how they were originally intended to be played. So those games used buttons, they were so early, they were so, such early games that they didn't require, they didn't have a joystick to play with them, you used the button. So uh, I've been getting to grips with learning and getting used to that kind of setup and it's really, really interesting. Uh, so I've been playing Asteroids, recently played a bit of Asteroids Deluxe, which is nicer, which I prefer uh, because Asteroids Deluxe uses the shield instead of having a warp. And I found when using the warp with asteroids, it would warp me most of the time, like 90% of the time in front of another asteroid and I get blown to smithereens immediately. So I, I think I prefer asteroids deluxe than use the shield. Uh, anyone else? Or is it just me? But um, yeah, I've been loving asteroids, classic. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't know why I've not played it this much before. I don't think I've played it this much ever actually. And it's one of those classic games that you think you'd always probably add to your, an arcade collection. So um, yeah, one that's new to me and as well as Astro Blaster as well. Another game that I've recently come across and been enjoying as well. Uh, so these really proper early 80s, 1981 and previous kind of era games. Space Invaders I've been playing a lot of. You know, I, I use a joystick for Space Invaders to be fair, but... Um, yeah, been learning a lot of new stuff, um, which brings me to this update about um, my buttons that I'm using. So when I originally planned to set up and design and build an arcade machine, I wanted that nostalgic feel. And at the very first um, step about deciding which kind of buttons to use, I wanted to use the kind of HAP style, American style buttons, the classic con cave style uh, arcade buttons uh, but in the end I kind of went with the Japanese style convex buttons that look like this this is an example of one of them this is a Sanwa button and you can see it's kind of like a con uh, con um, convex convex top uh, and this kind of style of button is kind of popular with you know uh, more the more professional gamers and I don't know in, in the Japanese were in the Japanese region and professional gamers who want more of a instant response um, but originally when I first um, went about thinking about buttons and controls for the arcade machine I wanted, I wanted this style this is the style of button I wanted this concave style completely um, nostalgic when you think of arcade buttons this is the one I thought of and I didn't go with this initially because I, I guess there was various reasons um, you know I got a, I got a lot of um, messages saying that you know the Japanese was the way to go and stuff like that uh, I've had a great run with the Japanese buttons I've really enjoyed them they are fantastic nothing against them whatsoever but I'm going to swap out I swap them out and go with this style and have a play with these now uh, for a little time and um, I think maybe possibly if I enjoy it 
oh, go and stick with them and go 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 with this style of button um, because they are just so nostalgic. And I did a video previously saying the kind of differences between this Japanese style button and this hap style button as well. Um, and what I didn't realise at the time was I thought that the the hap style button uh, was worse because it was it, it needed more pressure to press it and you get that click but um, that's completely uh, down to the actual micro switch that you buy which is interesting now these Japanese buttons they are pre micro switch so they come with a micro switch built in but they're not clicky so you can um, you can press them down and there's no click like there is on here this one has a micro switch you can hear it that's a really firm micro switch button. Uh, but this one, again, something I've learned in the last couple of weeks about buttons and um, something that I think a lot of hardcore arcade players like from back in the day prefer and they don't like, and I'm this way as well actually, to be honest with you, I don't like arcade buttons that are clicky, that have a click. Now you can buy micro switch, you can get micro switch arcade buttons that don't click. Um, for example, the Dreamcast, the Sega Dreamcast arcade stick, that has micro switch arcade buttons and that's annoying as hell. I, I don't like those buttons on there, for example. Um, but I've learned of a new type of switch that's not a micro switch. And I think it was originally used in, you know, the proper arcades back in the day. And that's something called a leaf switch. Um, I've been looking at the mechanism and how it works and what it's all about over the last couple of weeks. And I've been really impulsed to try these out. And I've got a set of these leaf switch arcade buttons. And this is them. Now, they don't take a, they don't take a micro switch um, that clicks. What the leaf switch does, it's, it's kind of like a, a switch like this. And when you push down the plunger, it just makes a little connection like that. And I think the advantages of that, they say, um, instead of a clicky micro switch, is that, well, there's advantages and disadvantages, but the advantage is that I think it's got more, I, I think you get more life out of it, you know? I think you probably get more button presses out of it like a hundred thousand plus or something like that uh yeah there might be downsides i don't know um what they are off the top of my head but um, i'm gonna go with these leaf switch arcade buttons because similar to what i've got now in here i've got say mitsu buttons and they're very similar to these sanwa ones whereas when you press them there's no click and they're quite soft to the touch so these ones are as well so, and they're not as soft as the uh, Sanwa ones, which don't take much to press. They do have a little bit more firmness, but they are still soft, um, like the Seimitsu ones I have in there. So I'm switching them all out for these leaf switch hap style buttons. Um, these aren't Suzo hap branded. They're not in. Uh, I wasn't. I was going to go for the Industrious Lorenzo brand with uh, Cherry Micro Switch, but I'm going to try out these Leaf Switches because I've heard fantastic things about them, and I think uh, the people who have said that they've gone with Leaf Switches haven't haven't gone back. Uh, so I've got my I've got all my colours here for my uh, don't eat it uh, for my you know neo geo colors and then i think I've, I've got a couple of extra yellow ones and some black ones and i've swapped out I've, you can take out the plunger of them and swap them over so you can do like color matching so i've gone with um black and yellow which is like the theme of my arcade machines theme color uh but i don't know which one I, to go with because i'm gonna let me show you it's gonna be a bit awkward because you can see here I've got on the Neo Geo colour scheme, but I've got the two main buttons for the all the other arcade games, and they're like yellow. But because of the Neo Geo button is yellow as well, um, 
I think it's going to kind of clash with the two main yellow buttons as well. So I think I might try like a yellow and black to kind of make them stand out. So I'm either going to do a yellow button with a black surround or a black button with a yellow surround. I think this one looks a lot better. What do you think? Uh, as the two main buttons there, like black button with a yellow surround. And then I'll have the four Neo Geo colors around them. I think this one stands out a lot better, doesn't it? I like that. And I've got the yellow kind of ball top. I might get a black neck covering for that shaft. Then it'll be black and yellow. I love the black and yellow color scheme. It's, it's brilliant. Um, but yeah, those are my new buttons. So I've got blue. I've got an orange one because I thought I might use orange, but I guess Neo Geo is more yellow than orange, isn't it? Um, so that's a spare. Uh, green. Red and blue. Classic red and blue. Uh, okay, so those are the buttons. I'm going to swap them out and then I'll do a little show of what they look like once I've swapped it out. The other pickup I've got was this. Uh, this is my marquee. This is like, um, I got this printed from a company that does like marquees, arcade marquees. Um, so let's take a look at it. Uh, yeah, that marquee up there is one I just printed off, you know, off the computer myself. I made it myself and, um, It's just basically paper, just to test if the light would come through. I might, I like, I like the idea of it, the style of it that I've got. It's like a Tron grid with the light cycles. So I might, if I might at some point send that off to these guys to get that printed off on a proper marquee bit of paper. But check this out. That's going to be my marquee. Like it. I like that a lot. That is smart. And so I'll stick that on there. Um, and because it's printed on a proper bit of, um, I guess, whatever it's called, film, the, it'll glow like a proper marquee, not just like the printer paper I used for that rubbish up there. So let's see if we can take that out. Oosh, there we go. So I'm going to take that, that off and it's going to, I don't know if it fits yet, I don't know, I haven't even tried this, but... This is printed to the scale of my marquee. So that should be perfect for that. And uh, yes, I'll stick that on and test it out as well with the light. So that's quite exciting as well. Um, yeah, cool. I'll, uh, I'll swap over the buttons and I'll do a quick flash, uh, a quick uh, whatever it's called, uh, and you'll see it in a few seconds. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, just quickly also, I think what I'll do is show you, I had a quick change and upgrade of my amp as well, and I re-laid out the speakers, so check this out. Uh, let's have a look here. I did a little quick shimmy. I've actually attached the Raspberry Pi to the back of there. I've got a new subwoofer because I've got a new amp. Uh, and now this is a really nice amp, um, does a much better job and it's got a super bass setting as well so I get much much more of a thud now um, and I put the wires instead of having the wires having the amp I had the amp previously up here and the wires trailing down I've got it all nicely set on the back door now so there's no stretchiness of the wires uh, it looks a lot nicer and cleaner um, and uh, easier to get to so yeah that's just a quick amp and speaker update as well so yeah i'm going to swap out the buttons now and you guys can have a have a look and see if you uh and if i as well prefer the, the hat star to these japanese ones here so yeah let's uh do a quick switch over and if by magic guys here we are here's the new buttons installed and I must say, they look and feel so much different. They're like more soft and... Oh, they've got such a much more of a different feel to them than these do. These are really, obviously, like easy press buttons and... You can hear the sound of these ones. And the sound of these... They're much more silent. But they're soft to feel as well. 
um, really nice. Um, I do love the flat color scheme because I had these kind of translucent buttons before. Um, well, here they are <laughs> on this side. So you can just compare these Seimitsu uh, buttons with the standard arcade buttons. Um, yeah, I like the flat color for the Neo Geo color scheme. Um, you can see if I kind of pan down this way, how much more of clearance you've got buttons wise. These don't come out very high at all. They're quite low. And like I was saying about that kind of arcade competition pro kind of button for those guys who like a really, really quick response on their games. These are definitely more traditional um, style for old school arcade games, which is kind of where I'm headed, I think, actually. I, and the softness of these buttons, they're beautiful. You, there's no clicky micro switch sound. No sound at all. So again, these are leaf switch. They're called leaf switch buttons. And um, oh, I love the feel of them. I, I really do. So I'm going to play with these for the next couple of weeks and uh, see how I get on. And um, yeah, I'll report back. And uh, yeah, I might go the whole hog and swap these ones out as well. Um, and I might even at some point swap the ball top out for a, a bat, a batten top, uh, just to see how that feels as well. Uh, but for now, I've always definitely wanted to go for these concave buttons, and I've finally got them installed. And I'm really happy with definitely the look of them, and happy with this colour scheme that I've got going on as well. So yeah, all in all, looking pretty good. Yeah, let's um, let's do the marquee now. Okay, so um, yeah, it looks like this marquee here is um, self-adhesive, so I'm going to have to peel this off and uh, lay it onto the plexiglass. I've got my special tool here for that softening, so it gets the air bubbles out. So hopefully I can do this without effing it up. So I'm going to take off my, uh, my really poor man's attempt at a marquee. And we're going to put the Neutron one on. So let's get rid of this. There we go, out with the old. Uh, let's clean up this plexiglass just a little bit. Okay, I don't know when the video cut out, but uh, here we go. Marquee is... Adhesed, adhesed. <laughs> it's stuck onto the plexi, so um, yeah, it's out with the old makeshift marquee, the old A4 paper printed one, and on with the nice new one. So I'll stick it on the arcade. We'll stick a bit of light behind it, and we'll see if it shows up. Okay, it's marquee time. So yeah, let's plug this in and see what it looks like. Wow, that looks beautiful. Hope it lines up well. It probably won't, knowing my luck. Oh yes, oh yes, that is beautiful. That's an authentic Tron marquee. Got the Encom logo there. Ah, oh, I've got to switch the lights on. Should we darken the room a bit before we do a light on, like, like Christmas? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna darken the room a little bit, and we're gonna. I'm going to switch on the lights. We'll see what it looks like. Moment of truth. Let's do this. Oh, wow. Yeah, that lights up nicely. That looks good. The light comes through it just perfectly. There we go. And the new buttons as well. There's the old buttons. There's the new ones. What do you think? I can of course adjust the light because it seems a bit uneven at the back there. They've put a bit more light on this side. But you get the idea anyway, but yeah. I think that's looking okay. So I'm gonna yeah, let's play some asteroids <laughs> with the original arcade buttons and Japanese C Mitsu buttons. <laughs> Okay, I think that's probably the kind of the best angle I'm I'm gonna get for you. So uh, 
Yeah, let's do this. Should use my shield there. Okay, that'll do. So yeah, thanks for watching um, this arcade update and uh, stay tuned for more videos. I don't know when, but uh, let me know what you guys think of the update. Bye for now.